Hello everybody, welcome to the first of the recorded English lessons that you guys will be learning from. My name is Mr. Hosni. Now, while I may not teach all of you English, while the lessons are taking place at home, I will be taking most of, if not all of the English lessons. The way that these work is, I will be talking you guys through some certain things, through some bits of information. I'll be explaining different things that are important to you and I will leave some different work attached. Some of the work might be worksheets, some of the work might be things that I expect you to write up either on your computer or on the um, on whatever word processor you're using. I'm trying to get the hang of all of the different ways to screen capture and screen record. The way that it's set up at the moment I can, I'm recording everything that's on the screen, so if this is disorienting you, I'm sorry. I'm going to flip screens to make it a bit easier for you guys to keep track. So, this term for English, we're focusing on persuasive texts. We're going to have a, a deep look into what is a persuasive text. We're going to look at all of the different ways that we can persuade that we can persuade people, we can persuade their way of thinking, we can change people's minds and opinions. I've got some different things planned, even some weird and wacky things that we might not normally do in English. And while I don't expect all of you guys to do an absolutely spectacular, amazing job at everything, all I want to see is your very best. If you can't do something that I've asked, I just want to see you try. It's not about being the very best at everything that we do, but it's about showing your best. And if you show me your best, then I'm very happy and that's all I can ask for. The way that I like to set up most of my lessons, if not all of them, is having our learning intentions and our success criteria. I like to have these start off the beginning of our lesson because it gives us an idea of where our lesson is going. So our learning intentions, these are the different things that we should be able to do by the end of the lesson. So hopefully we can come back and tick these off. So by the, end, by the end of the lesson, I can, you can, explain what persuasion is. See the different areas where persuasion is used and practice my persuasion skills. I should change that to persuasive skills. That's still not 100%. My skills of persuasion. <laughs> Got to write the third time. Like I said, it's not always about being perfect. It's just about doing your best. And our success criteria. These are the things that we're going to do to get there. That doesn't mean that these are the only three things that you're doing this lesson. But these are the three things that we're going to use to help us get to this end goal. So first, we're going to have an explanation on persuasion. We're going to talk about what persuasion is. We're going to talk about what we need to do to be persuasive. We're going to identify and explain persuasion. So in this, what are they trying to persuade you to do? And how are they trying to persuade you? In this task, we're going to, going to be looking at I didn't want to move that. We're going to be looking at some different um, advertisements. We're starting off with some images, some advertisements of things that are up on, on um, Google Images. And the last one is a persuasive writing task. I'm going to finish off with an additional task that I'd like you guys to try and do, but we're going to be focusing on our persuasive writing first to start off with. Okay. If I look a little bit disorganized, I am very, very sorry. I have two different mouses because I'm trying to manage the computer that I'm working on and the computer that I'm reading my notes from. Alongside having the computer that I'm working on on another screen so that I can look up instead of looking down. The reason why I have the two screens is because on one screen I should be able to draw some pictures for you and just highlight different things in different ways. So if it looks like I'm managing some things, I do apologize. I'm learning all of these different technologies at the same time as you guys are. Okay, so first, 
I can explain what persuasion is and we're going to do a quick explanation on persuasion. Persuasion. You know, I'm going to... Didn't mean to do that. Boom. New page. How good am I? I already had it prepared. What is persuasion? So when we're talking about persuasion, this is helping someone I'm going to take that off bold and italic. Helping someone make up their mind. We're helping someone make up their mind. We're helping them make a decision that they might be struggling with. One of the biggest decisions that I struggle with every day is, what do you want to eat today? My mom asked me a little while ago, what do you want to eat for dinner tonight? That was a question that we went back and forth. I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? This is one of those things where we don't always know what we feel like or what we want. And we might persuade someone or help someone persuade us as to what, um, as to how we would want to make up our mind or how we would want them to make up their mind. One way that I tried to use persuasion a lot in my life was when I was younger. My favorite food is pizza. Whenever my family would sit down and say, well, what do you want to have for dinner tonight? I would always say pizza. Pizza was my go-to meal. I would always say, I want to eat pizza. So when we're trying to persuade someone, we're giving our opinion. Is it always enough just to say, I want to eat pizza and hope that everyone's going to give in and say, yeah, let's get pizza. That might work one time, but I don't think that that's going to work all of the time. When we're looking at what we might, how we might use our opinion to make someone else's opinion, we need to look at what else we need to do. We need to give them reasons explain why our opinion is good slash better that's meant to say better I am sorry or helpful so we need to give them reasons we need to explain to, to them why our opinion is better my go to with pizza why should we have pizza tonight? First, pizza tastes amazing. It is one of the best foods ever. Secondly, most people can't eat a full pizza in one meal, which means you don't just have dinner tonight, but you might also have breakfast tomorrow or lunch tomorrow. You can always get garlic bread and different sides that makes the meal really exciting when you get pizza. And you could even order a number of different pizzas and share with all the different people that are eating with you, all of the different members of your family. So when, we, so when we're talking about what we should eat for dinner, I think we should get pizza because of all of the amazing reasons that I've just given you. So instead of just giving our opinion and telling someone you should do this because, sorry, instead of just telling someone you should do this, we need to give them our reasons and tell them that you should do this because our because here is very important. If we just tell someone to do something, quite often they're going to say no. A lot of people don't like being told to do something because I said so. People like being given reasons. Tell me why this is better than that. Tell me why pineapple should be on pizza or why it shouldn't be. You can't just tell me that something is a certain way. You need to tell me why. Mum, I want to go to Disneyland. No. Sometimes if you just say that you want something or that something should happen, you're going to be told no. And when we're persuading someone using our skills in persuasion, we're giving them reasons. We're trying to change their mind. We're explaining to them all of the different reasons why what we're doing is really good. Now we're going to have a look at the modes of persuasion. 
When we're talking about the mode, we're talking about how something comes out, how it's brought through. So the first and most obvious mode or way to persuade people are through words. So I'm going to make that our little subheading are through words. When we're telling someone or giving someone our reasons as to why something is better than something else, quite often we're using our words to explain what we're talking about. If we're writing down our, um, our persuasive text, we're using words to explain ourselves. Actions are another really important way to persuade people. We can persuade someone with our actions. We might see this in advertisements where the people show you how refreshing a drink is by drinking it in a really hot day. The action of drinking something shows you that that's really refreshing because at the end of it, they were really refreshed. There are also a, num a number of different ways that actions are helpful and we're going to look at that a little bit later on. Then we have images. We might see a nice big billboard. We might see an ad in a newspaper or in a magazine. When we see how something is being used or the different ways that something can be used, that's another way that we can persuade someone to use something that we like, to use our product. And the other way that we're going to focus on are through our own choices. When we look at some of the different ways that people will try and persuade us, one of them comes through the choices that they make. We might see that something, uh, we might look at whether or not to use one of the old arguments, is Coke better or is Pepsi better? When this battle was, you know, at the forefront of our television screens, way back when, we had certain celebrities that were saying, I drink Coke all the time, or certain celebrities saying, I drink Pepsi all the time. Now, if you like one celebrity more than another, you might go where their opinion lies. So you're following their choices. Another way that we look at certain people's choices, another group of people whose choices we might look at are cartoon characters or characters from TV shows that we might watch. Why go to McDonald's? Because Ronald McDonald is there. So we look at his choices. We look at the choices of all of the different people that are involved. Now, when we look at the modes of persuasion, we need to remember Telling people, um, sorry, what we're doing with our modes of persuasion, I'm going to cut that out, is that we're telling people why our choice is better than someone else's choice or an alternative option. And by alternative option, we mean a different thing slash option, <laughs> not option, a different thing, a different choice. When we're persuading someone, we're telling people that our choice is better. Why should we have pizza for dinner? Well, because pizza is so much better than regular old hamburgers. Hamburgers, the bun gets a bit soggy, or whatever expl explanation that you might like to use to help someone make up their mind. Further to this, we are giving someone reasons to think or to do something. We're not just telling people Sometimes when I'm typing quickly, my punctuation might not be on point, so I do apologize in advance. We're not just telling people that this is what they have to do. Because remember, if we tell people that you have to do something, quite often they don't want to do it anymore. So we're going to be giving people some different options, some different choices that they can make. 
some different reasons to go through our, our advice. Why should you do what I've told you? Because reason one, reason two, and reason three. When we're persuading someone, we're trying to change their mind. So we're going to do a quick scroll up to the top. I can explain what persuasion is. So hopefully by now you can explain what persuasion is. In your workbooks, I would really like it if you could write down the question. Explain what, well it's not really a question, so we'll write it down here. What is persuasion? So I would love it if you could write this question down in your books. Pause the video here and go through what we've just spoken about. What is persuasion? I want you to write your answer down in your workbooks or on your word processor and I would like your answer to be as detailed as you can make it. So I'd love it if you could pause the video here, go back and get that task done. Ready, set, go. One of my students asked me in the videos that I made for them towards the end of last term. They said, Mr. Hosni, why is it that you pause every time you ask us to pause the video? And that's because it first, I'm not very good at editing videos, so I can't really cut this section out. <laughs> and secondly, because if it takes you guys a little bit of time to hit the pause button, I like to make that little bit of a buffer, give you that little bit of extra time to get there and hit that pause button. So we're going to come to our answer. What is persuasion? Persuasion is trying to change someone's mind, trying to give them all of the different reasons to do something or to make a choice that we think is best. That's persuasion when we try and persuade. Now we're going to have a look at, sorry, this is where I'm looking at my other screen, our modes of persuasion. No, wait one second. We did that and my screen moved on, on itself. Words, actions, images, and choice. Perfect. So what is persuasion? Trying to change someone's mind. Now we're going to have a quick look at some of the different ways that people have tried to persuade us. So I've gone into Google, I've typed in advertisements. Now we're going to have a look at some different advertisements and have a look at how they try and persuade us. So the first one is right here. We have a red McDonald's chip packet and instead of the fries or the chips that they have inside, they have a whole bunch of pencils. So here's where I'm going to put that there, put that there. So we're going to write the subheading of advertisement one, McDonald's chip packet. So we're going to write that as our little subheading as we're getting ready to analyze this advertisement. So what does McDonald's use? in their advertisement. What is the first thing that stands out to you? First we can see the colors. What is the main color in this advertisement? It's not you. <laughs> I hit the wrong buttons. It's red. Red and yellow are the two big colors. The main color, because we can see it color, the entire background is red. Why does McDonald's focus on the two colors of red and yellow? Because they're the colors of the brand. Whenever you see McDonald's, you see their signs are red and yellow. Red and yellow is everywhere. And what they're trying to do is make us, anytime we see red, see McDonald's. What's the next thing that we notice in this? Instead of the fries, we have pencils. Why are the pencils really important in this image? 
McDonald's is trying to show us that they can give us more than just food, they can give us learning opportunities. That there are other things that McDonald's has to offer. And even before the pencils, we can see this little heading. What? We can see this little heading that says learning experience full stop. What this offers us, what this shows us is what McDonald's is trying to tell us. They're trying to tell us that they have a golden opportunity. I don't know if you can read that. It is a little bit small, but they have a golden opportunity that they can give us something else. And they're trying to show us what they can give us through their use of pencils. So here we've looked at some of the different things that McDonald's has tried to use to persuade us. Now we're going to have a look at advertisement too. Coca-Cola. So what does Coca-Cola use to persuade us here? First we have the colors. The main colors that they've used are red again and black. When we look at red, that's one of the big colors of Coca-Cola's brand. They have mainly used red and white, but this time they've changed it to red and black. So they're still trying to make us see Coca-Cola whenever we see the red, make that part of their advertisement because that's the color of the company. Next we have black. We did say that Coke usually uses red and white. So why is black important in this instance? Because here we can see that the Coke cans are a little bit different. They're not trying to advertise their regular Coke at the moment. I think that the black cans are Coke Zero. And in giving us this, they're showing us the new product. They're trying to show us the new product, make us think that this new product is really important and really exciting for us to try. Then we have their slogan or their catchphrase. Back in the day, it used to be always Coca-Cola. But here they're asking us to share a Coke. If Coke is saying share a Coke, what are they trying to tell us about their product? They're trying to tell us that Coke is something that brings people together. It makes friendships. I apologize for the way I've had to set this up. It's because the screen continues there. So ignore the capital T or ignore the squiggly red line that goes underneath it. <laughs> They're trying to show us that they make friendships, that they bring people together. They're trying to show us that when you have a Coke, you can have fun. Then we have the image of the two people together. I'm literally going to copy this because they have the image for the exact same reason. They're trying to show us that Coke is something that brings people together, that it makes friendships and that Coke is fun. Here we can see the people aren't just sitting there holding their Coke looking like this. They're really happy they're holding it out in front of them to show off what they have, to show them that this Coke is really exciting. They've got a big smile on their face. The girl's nice and happy sitting upright and the guy's so excited he's got his head turned sideways. 
They're showing us that Coke is fun, that Coke is something that brings people together and makes friendships. Now we're going to scroll down for another advertisement. You know what? I like using toy advertisements, mainly because, if I'm being honest, I like playing with toys. Some of these toy advertisements are from really, really old toys. So let's try and have a look for a toy. So some of them are also from advertisements that are up on YouTube. Some of the toy review companies get given toys for free, or they even get paid to show off their toys. Like this young man here. I'm trying to find a toy that you guys might know and see. Okay, that's a bit small. Let's see if we can find one that's a little bit bigger. Okay. We're going to focus our advertisement a little bit and look at Barbie advertisements. Uh, I didn't mean to click it that way. I meant to. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Apologize for my... Okay. So now we're having a look at advertisement three. We're having a look at Barbie. And someone, some of you might be thinking, why are we looking at Barbie? I'm going to be honest. I was watching a documentary on Netflix or a documentary series called The Toys That Made Us. And one of the things that they were talking about, one of the episodes was focused on Barbie and how Barbie came to be. So it was one of the first toys that came into my mind. So we're probably going to jump from Barbie to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles next. <laughs> so with advertisement three, what's the first thing that stands out to us? We have the color. The background color is pink. To bring in whose attention? Which group of people do you think um, the Mattel company is trying to bring in by using the color pink. This is a little bit of a, um, it's a typical way of thinking. It's not necessarily that every person thinks this way, but they're trying to use the color pink to bring in the attention of girls. I would think mainly younger girls because we have a young girl pictured here but they might even try and just bring in the attention of the mothers to see this and think that this is something that their daughters might like even fathers to see this and think that's pink girls like pink so my daughter must want this next we have the image of the girl instead of just putting a picture of a girl there we need to look at what the girl is doing she's looking up to the doll she's smiling at the doll so what do these two behaviors tell us she's looking up to the doll because she can play with Barbie and imagine what her life is going to be like. If Barbie dresses up as a doctor, she can imagine herself being a doctor. Next, she's smiling at the doll to show her that she's going to show the people looking at the advertisement that she's going to have a lot of fun playing with her Barbie because she is happy. So Barbie makes young girls happy. Next, we have... I spelled that wrong catch phrase the catch phrase says my first Barbie specially made for a little girl to love so the catch phrase tells us who is going to love this the catch phrase tells us that little girls are sp um, going to love this that this was made for little girls to love next this tells us that it's my first because if we don't have a Barbie yet, the first Barbie is 
one of the most important toys for a young girl to fall in love with. So we can see that all of these different things were made to catch these people's attention. We can even take this to another level if you want to get really deep into the um, into the analysis of the ad when we're looking at the image of the Barbie. First, the, uh, we're looking at what the product is. We can see that they're showing us what the product is. What product is being advertised? This Barbie doll. Next, we're looking at the two colors of pink and white. We can look into what these colors mean to different people. When someone's wearing a white dress, what event do we normally think of? One thing that a lot of people think of is their wedding. And I only know this because I was watching the documentary but one of the reasons why Barbie was made really big was because one of the daughters was trying, one of the mothers, sorry, wanted a doll so that she could teach her daughter how she could take care of herself to get married. How she could help, her, help the daughter teach her how to brush her own hair and make herself look nice. That's not necessarily the same focus that the Barbie has, the image that Barbie has now, but that is the image that Barbie has moving um, had way back when, when it was first made. So the white dress helped people focus on the idea of using this to help to, to prepare them for marriage, to get them ready for that. Now, I'm going to put up another image. So we're going to have a look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, that didn't make that specific image bigger, but that's fine. Okay, there we go. So, I would like for you guys to write the next heading of Advertisement 4 and tell me some of the different things that you can see inside this picture. What are they using to convince us to buy this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles party wagon? <laughs> what advertisement techniques are being used here. So I'd love it if you guys could pause the video here and work on what techniques you can see in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles party wagon. So some of the things that you might have seen are the colors how all of the different colors were brought in. One color that stands out next to, next to green um, is red. And while there isn't a lot of red up here, we have the red down here to stand, off, stand out next to the green of the turtles of their bus. And the red is even sort of a little bit orangey here on the different features to help it stand out next to the green of the turtles. We have the new TV to help people remember that this was something that they can see on TV that this might have been something that was inside the television show of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles we have all of the add-ons the additional features all of the extra things that you can do with this that you can use this for why is this exciting? Because it has these ray guns on top or antenna, whatever they are. Because it has this chair for Raphael to sit on. It has these things. 
and it helps you tie all of these different things into your imagination. And then we have the image behind. As well as the image of the turtles. Because it lets you use your imagination. I can make my own setting and I can make my own background. Now we're going to have one more advertisement. You know what? I'm going to type in advertisement for teen ages. What stands out to us here? What's something? You know what? No. What I would love for you guys, if you are doing this on a computer, I would love it if you could find your own advertisement, copy the picture, put it down, and then have your breakdown just like we did above. If you're doing this in your workbook, Maybe take a picture of the advertisement using someone's phone and take a picture of your work so that you can upload it to your Google Classroom so we can have a look at it. I want to see advertisement 5 and I want to see your own breakdown. So I would love it if you guys could pause the video here, go back and finish up your breakdown of advertisement 5. Now we're going to come back up, hoping that you guys have finished up advertisement five and we're going to have a look at our learning intentions. I can see the different areas where persuasion is being used. So the area that we focused on persuasion, the area in which we focused on persuasion was in advertisements. We were identifying and explaining persuasion. What are they trying to do? All of those advertisements were trying to convince us to buy a product or to buy their brand of food. How are they trying to persuade us? We had a look at their use of colors. We had a look at the way that they used all of these different things. The colors, the images, the slogans and the catchphrases to persuade us. Now we're, gonna, we're going to use the last bit of our lesson to focus on practicing our skills of persuasion with some persuasive writing. So we've done a lot of work this lesson. So we're going to be up here. We're going to focus on peel. When we're looking at persuasive writing, we need to remember that what we are trying to do is we're trying to change someone's mind. So we cannot just tell people to do something because I said so, we need to give them a reason why. When we're looking at our own persuasive writing, Peel is a really easy way to set up what we're working on. It's a really easy way to set up our thoughts and to organize our paragraph. So our first P stands for points. What are you trying to tell me? Now the easiest way to do this is we're going to have our own little peel paragraph starting at the bottom here. So my first question is, what are we going to have for dinner? What? So I'm going to put my P. My P here to show us that this is our point sentence. What are we going to have for dinner? We should have pizza for dinner. Because, so what, what's my point? I'm trying to tell you what we should have and why we should have it. So we should have pizza because we can have a variety of flavors if we share pizzas. So my what is we should have pizza for dinner. And why? 
because we can have a variety of flavors if we share our pizza. So that's my point. What's the point and what am I trying to tell you? My point is that we should have pizza and I'm trying to tell you that we should have pizza because it has a number of different flavors. Then we come to explain and we need to go in depth with our explanation. So I'm going to open up my brackets. I'm going to put in E1. So we're going to explain why we should have pizza for dinner. So we've said we should have pizza for dinner because we can have a variety of flavors if we share pizzas. If we share our pizzas, we can have different options, full stop. We can try some meat pizzas, some vegetarian pizzas, and some chicken pizzas. We can get a pizza each and share our slices. So here I've used more than just one sentence to, to explain my point, but this is my explanation in depth. So we should have at least one sentence, but the more that we explain it, the more persuasive that we're going to be. Then we have our example. So where can we see this? Or how can we see this? Now in my explanation here, I've used many sentences. So this sentence is probably the best example of an explanation I can give, of an example that I can give. If we share our pizzas, we can have different options. We can try some meat pizzas, some vegetarian pizzas, and some chicken pizzas. We can get a pizza and share our slices. Now last is our link. And here we're going to link back to our question. So what a lot of us might be used to doing is restating the question or using it in a full sentence when we're answering it. What we're doing here is we're breaking down our full sentence at the end to remind people what we're talking about. Sometimes people can get a little bit distracted and they can forget what it is that we're talking about. So our link sentence brings their mind, brings their thoughts back to what we were talking about way back in the beginning. This is why we should have pizza for dinner. Full stop. So there we have our peel paragraph. Our point. What are you trying to tell me? Our explanation. Here I want you to go in depth with your explanation. I want you to tell me why. Convince me. Change my mind. Our example. Where can we see this and how can we see this? And our link. I want you to link it back to your question. So now I'm going to put down some different options. What I would love for you guys to do at home. I would love for you to answer one or more of these questions here. The more questions you answer, the more points you get. Should we go to Disneyland? Is it still Disneyland or is it Disney World? I'm not sure. Should we go to Disneyland? I don't know. You tell me. Should we go a month without turning on the TV? 
That sounds like a bit of a challenge, but is it a good challenge? Is it something that we should try and do? Should we never buy another lolly chocolate or other sweets ever again? That sounds like another challenge because I have a gigantic sweet tooth. I love chocolate. So we're going to answer one or more of these questions. You know what? I'm going to change that. I want to see you guys answer two of these questions. And if you answer all three, you get bonus points. I would love to see you all use our peel format. So all of our answers should have at least four sentences. Our point, explanation, example, and our link. We're going to have at least four sentences in this activity. Now, before we end up this lesson, I'm going to let you know that I will be um, trying to put up an extension activity for you guys to do in your own time. It might not be up at the same time as this video, but keep your eyes open. It will be up very soon. Thank you all for watching. If you need a hand with any of the tasks that we've been working on, please let me know. Um, message me or your other teachers on Google Classroom and let us know what, uh, what it is that we can do to help you out or what it is that you might need help with. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.